What's up, everybody? My name is Pantsface, and welcome to another Olduar boss guide. Today, we're going to talk about Freya, the mystical forest goddess of Olduar. While this fight has a lot of pieces to it, it's actually incredibly easy to parse on if you know what you're doing. And the nice thing is, is it doesn't matter how your raid is doing this fight, as you individually should be able to parse while contributing the most to your raid. Alright, let's stop with the foreplay and get into the fight. So before we even talk about the fight, and I know I just said we were going to talk about the fight, but before we talk about the fight, let's talk about Gliss. As a Shadow Priest, there's one really important glyph that you want for this fight, and that's going to be the glyph of Mindseer. The reason we want this is because it's going to increase the range that our Mindseer does damage within, so it'll increase the radius so that it just deals damage further out. Now why is that important? Because for so much of this fight, we're going to be Mindseering. When the little lads come up, the ones that explode, we're going to Mindseer. When the three big spirits come out, we're going to Mindseer. And when the Ancient Conservator is up, well, we're not going to Mindseer that. We're going to single target him down. But for four out of the six ad waves, we're going to Mindseer, and that's incredibly important to parse in this fight. So let's talk about each of the ad waves and what you want to do to parse on each of them. Honestly, your single target damage to Freya at the end of the fight doesn't even matter when it comes to parsing. It does matter because it's part of your parse, but so much of parsing well in this fight comes from doing AoE in the beginning. So first up, we have the Lashers. And this is the first time that Glyph of Mindseer is going to be important. Now, when the Lashers spawn, they spawn in a circle around Freya. If you were to Mindseer off of Freya to hit the Lashers, but didn't have the Glyph of Mindseer, your Mindseer wouldn't have a big enough area of damage to hit all of the Lashers. So what I had suggested previously in other guides was to dot a few of them up and wait for them to run in, and then to Mindseer off of Freya once they all run in. Now, if you don't have the Glyph of Mindseer, I'd still recommend doing that. But with the Glyph of Mindseer, as soon as they spawn, you can just start Mindseering off of Freya and you will hit every Lasher that spawns. I also recommend pre-fading, so just before they spawn, use Fade so that you can Mindseer without worrying about aggro. This is also where we want to use Inner Focus. So when we use Inner Focus, we get 25% crit to whatever spell we're about to cast. And when we cast Mindseer, that lasts for the entire duration. So every tick onto every enemy has 25% increased chance to crit. And since we're hitting all of these Lashers at once, on our first Mindseer off of Freya, we want to make sure we're using Inner Focus to get that juicy crit buff. So assuming your entire raid is stacked up on Freya, you will Mindseer, you'll hit all the Lashers, they will eventually run on top of Freya, and you just keep Mindseering Freya. Remember, Mindseer doesn't hit the target that you're Mindseering, which is why we want to Mindseer off of Freya, because damage to her doesn't count until we start killing her anyway. And then just make sure you get away from the Lashers before they explode, and then keep Mindseering to finish them off. It's actually incredibly simple, and the Glyph of Mindseer just makes it that much easier. The next set of adds we have are the three spirits. So we have the water spirit, the storm lasher, and the lightning spirit, whatever his name is. Now, in an ideal world, what you want to do is you want to dot all three of them up and then Mindseer off of Frey to hit all three of them at once. Remember, Mindseer is stronger than Mind Play if you can hit at least two targets, and here we're hitting three, so it's even that much better. Now, if your players do a good job kiting them, they won't stray too far from Freya, so you don't really need the glyph here, although it does really help because the Water Spirit, if it gets its ability off, it will go charging across the arena, and you might not even be able to hit it with a Glyph, but as these uh, Spirits are being kited and they kind of stray from Freya, the fact that you have the Glyph of Mindseer just makes it easier to Mindseer all of them at the same time. So you may want to stop Mindseering to reapply your dots, and then just keep Mindseering. The one issue with this strategy is that if you're damaging all three of them at the same rate, then one of them could die well before the Snaplasher dies since that has the most amount of HP. You want to make sure you kill all three of them close to the same amount of time, because if not, the one that died first may respawn if you take too long to kill the others. So at a certain point, maybe when the one with the lowest HP gets to around 150k HP, you stop mind searing and you start single targeting the one that has the most HP. And that's it for these ads, you know, just keep your dots up and mind sear, and that's really it. Now the final ad we have is the Ancient Conservator. We don't really care about him from a DPS perspective considering it's just single target, but what we do care about are the mushrooms that spawn. Now, when you're fighting the Ancient Conservator, you're silenced if you're not standing under a mushroom. But standing under a mushroom increases your damage by 25% and removes the silence. The important part here is the damage buff, because after you kill that big old dumb tree and the next wave of ads spawns, you can still use the mushrooms to DPS. Now, if these are the Lashers, you want to make sure you're getting that buff onto your Mindseer. 
If it's the three spirits, you want to make sure you're getting to that buff onto your dots and then onto your mind seer. And if it's Freya herself, then you want to make sure you're snapshotting your dots onto Freya with that mushroom buff. It's funny, the mushroom buffs are actually most impactful on all the adds that are not the conservator, which is the one that it spawns with. So taking advantage of this mushroom buff for whatever ad spawns after the tree is incredibly important. And that's it for the three different individual ad waves. So you just want to make sure you're AOEing as much as possible on the first two groups. So that'd be the lashers and the spirits and maximizing your single target and your uptime because of the silence onto the conservator. Don't forget to kill any roots that target some of your raid members and keep them rooted in place or the gifts of ENR that are the little trees that heal everything. Now, if the trees spawn in between ad phases when you're not killing Freya, then it's not going to heal anything when it pops. So definitely still kill it, but there's no rush to kill it as if there would be if you were in the middle of killing ads when it spawned. And then the only other phase to talk about is killing Freya at the end of the fight. As I mentioned, you want to make sure to snapshot your dots going into this phase with the mushroom buff. That 25% damage will last in your Shadow Word Pain for the entire fight, assuming you keep it refreshed and you don't need to recast it. While this is nice, the damage from Shadow Word Pain is so small that this snapshot really doesn't matter when it comes to parsing. Obviously you want all the damage you can get, but Shadow Word Pain is just such a weak spell that whether you have that or not, it's really not going to change your parse a whole lot, especially just for the Freya portion of the fight. If anything, it would be more impactful to snapshot the damage when you're dotting up the three spirits because then you have three versions of that dot being applied opposed to just the one on Freya. So during Freya, you're just going to be hopping back and forth, trying not to get hit by the bombs, trying not to get interrupted by her shout ability, which she does throughout the entire fight, but just make sure not to get interrupted. And that's really it. You just single target her down and then hopefully your parse was high enough on the AOE portions that you have a good parse overall. If you really want to be degenerate about your parse, you can try to ask your other raiders to not DPS the ads so that you can get all that damage for yourself. Now this is probably what a lot of parse guilds will do towards the end of the phase when they're just trying to maximize the parse for their raiders. So if that happens, it'll be really difficult for you to parse if your raid's not doing that. Which I'm sure most raids won't be doing that, I know mine never would. But that's just something to think about when you see the highest parses on this fight, and they probably had some help from their guild in order to do that. Now make sure you don't forget to swap your Mindseer Glyph, as I forget almost every week to do it, I think I've only remembered to do it once now. That's incredibly important for parsing on this fight, and that's where the majority of the skill comes in. Just don't forget to swap that glyph. Anyway, that's all I got for you in this guide. My name's Pantsbase, and I'll see you in the next one.